I just want to start a new session with the most demanding topic for almost all competitive examinations that is Indian physiography. This is an introductory video where I'm just focusing upon some specific terms like physiography, landforms, different physical processes, environment and most importantly the major subdivisions or physiographic subdivisions of Indian mainland. This all basic things will be beneficial for all of you to get or understand this concept effectively. So let's start with the term physiography. Here you can see physiography mainly related with physical geography. It is the subfield of geography that studies about the physical patterns and processes of our environment. This part of geography mainly focuses upon landforms, the particular river flow and different physical processes which are mainly responsible for the formation of different landforms. So it describes the features of the earth surface. What is the meaning of earth surface? The surface where we all are living right now. Okay. Now physiography can vary from one place to another place. If you consider two different region and the physiographic divisions of this two region, you can simply get the difference between the physiographic divisions. Okay. Now let's try to understand this physiographic concept with the help of this diagram. First we have geography. Geography is subdivided into two parts, physical human. Human geography is not important for this session. So just skip it. Physical geography. From the term itself, you can easily get it deals with natural features or environment. Now come to physiography. Physiography, this term related with physical geography. Focuses upon mainly different kinds of landforms. We are having several major landforms in our earth surface like hills, mountains, plateaus, plains, etc. And most importantly, the rivers and different kinds of physical processes like erosion, transportation and deposition. These three important physical process and rivers are very much important for giving a particular shape of a particular landform. So I think all of you get the idea of physiography. Physical geography is mainly related with some natural features or environment. So what is the meaning of environment? Just have a look. Environment simply means our surroundings. In our surroundings we are having different living things known as biotic and different non-living things known as abiotic. Under living things, we have different plants, animals, different kinds of bacteria and fungus. And in the non-living things, we are having water, soil, air, minerals, lights, etc. Now, the term physiography. I have already mentioned that it is mainly related with landforms. We are having several kinds of major landforms like hills, mountains, plateaus, plains, etc. But what is this landform? Just have a look. Landform. From the term itself, you can easily get the idea. Land and forms. Form simply means shape. So, shape of a particular land is known as landform. It is a natural feature of the earth surface on the basis of the shape of the land of that particular region. So, on the basis of the shape, when a particular land is recognized, then this kind of physical feature is specifically known as landforms. Now we have different physical processes. Those physical processes are mainly responsible for giving a particular shape to those landforms like hills, mountains, plateaus and plains. So those physical processes are first we have erosion, then we have transportation, and last one deposition. So what is erosion? With the help of different physical agents like water, wind, ice, when the rock particles are removed from the main rocks, then this process is simply known as erosion. Just take an example that I am beating a rock surface. 
continuously with my fullest energy with a hammer what will happen after some time some rock particles will separate from the main rocks this process is simply known as erosion okay just have a look in this picture here we have the mountain top as a source of the river this river is having a steep slope and that's why erosion takes place because the river in its highest or fullest energy okay now transportation what is transportation when the eroded materials are moved from one place to another place so after erosion when the eroded material are transported from this place to this place gentler slope region then this process of movement is simply known as transportation so last one we have deposition when the transported rock particles are settled down in a particular place this process is simply known as deposition so from the steep slope to gentle slope after gentle slope we are having the lowland or plain surface in this plain surface the river started to settling down all this eroded material okay so when the rivers starts to settle down all the eroded materials then this process is simply known as deposition in our earth surface we have different major landforms on the basis of their height and their shape so just have a look first we have plain from ground surface up to 300 meters the land is known as plains from 300 to 600 meters it is known as plateau from 600 to 900 meters it is known as hill and above 900 meters the land is specifically known as mountainous regions so we are having several examples of those physical landforms in our whole earth first one we have mount everest as a mountainous region joychundi as a hill chhatnagpur as a plateau and ganga as a plain region in the right hand side all of you can see the pictures now come to the last part the characteristic features of those physical landforms so first one we have plain it's a flat region soil is fertile and that's why it is useful for agriculture because of its height it is known as low land now come to the plateau region raised area with a flat top you can see here in this picture flat top height is almost 300 to 600 meters it is having a flat top plain region but it's a rocky surface that's why not suitable for agriculture it is also known as high plain table top or flat top mountains now next hills if a particular region is higher than its surroundings then this kind of specific land area is simply known as hills if the height in between 600 to 900 meters if this kind of land is more than 900 meters then it should be mountainous region okay the most important difference between this mountains and hills hills are having gentle slope but mountains are having a very steep slope now all physical processes mentioned earlier are responsible for the formation of different shape of a particular landform on the basis of different physiographic landforms and physical features india is mainly subdivided into six physiographic regions first one we have northern himalaya in the northern part we have north and northeastern mountainous region or himalayan region then northern plain In the southern part of north and northeastern mountainous region we have northern plain region. Number 3 we have peninsular plateau region. Again in the southern part of northern plain region we have the peninsular plateau region. 
Number four, Indian desert. In the extreme west of Indian map, we have Indian desert. Number five, west and east coastal plains. In the westernmost part and easternmost part, we have east and west coastal plain region. What is coast? I have already mentioned it in my previous video. Now last one, we have Indian islands. We are having two important islands. In the Bay of Bengal, we have Andaman and Nicobar Islands and in Arabian Sea, we have Lakshadweep Islands. So that's all for today. In my next video, I'll discuss the Himalayan region. Thank you.